Hi everyone, <clears throat> Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to show you an interesting game I played against the FIDE Master in round 4 of the Croatian League. Uh, so their team has two different players that usually play on board one uh, and I wasn't sure which one was going to, to play so I had to prepare for, for both. But I both have pretty similar repertoires and they both like playing d6, g6 systems. So either the Pirts, the Modern or the King's Indian. And I've prepared for a long time. Uh, there were several variations that worried me, <clears throat> several that, that I wanted to avoid and several that I wanted to enter. I ended up playing Fide Master in Ivekovic, uh, who is a very experienced player and has been playing for a long time. Uh, I started pawn d4 and to be honest, my biggest wish was to enter the King's Indian because I had something prepared, but I was also expecting him to go for the modern defense. Uh, so with, without knight f6, he ended up playing g6 uh, and after c4, bishop g7, knight c3, he played d6. So the knight still isn't on f6 and when I play e4, he can choose to enter the standard King's Indian with knight f6 or he can play knight c6, uh, which he ended up playing. It's also possible to play e5 or knight d7 or, or c6 or c5, getting a type of Benoni position. So there are, <clears throat> you can basically go into a Pirates defense, Modern defense, King's Indian defense, Benoni defense, several different options. He played knight c6. Okay. And this is now the, the coat of... Uh, variation of the modern and in this position people usually play e5 that's that's the main move so e5 d5 and uh, th this is the variation i've been expecting and uh, I, I was preparing for this the main move here is knight to e7 knight c to e7 and my opponent has several games from this position uh, he has faced c5 before which should be the best move according to the engine. The idea behind c5 is to take on d6, create a weakness on d6, and then play along the c-file. Uh, that plan is very strong uh, in, in conjunction with the knight coming to b5. There could be problems on c7 very early on. Of course, the center is blocked and this bishop is, is blocked. So you have a freer hand on the queen side than usual if you can open up the, the, the c file and have black play without uh, the dark squared bishop, where, whereas your bishops are perfect. But uh, against this, I've actually prepared g4, which is the main theoretical move. And my opponent has maybe one game in the database with this move or zero games. I'm not even sure anymore. This game was a month ago. Uh, and there are several continuations from here. Uh, for white, but black's continuation is forced. Black has to play f5 now, because if black doesn't play f5, then I'm, I'm gonna go g5. So f5 and gf, gf, and queen h5 check. Now here you can play king f8, which I think is the best move, or knight g6. In any case, I'd been preparing this variation for a long time and in great depth, but my opponent ended up playing knight d4, which is it's a good move, uh, but uh, as in many King's Indian and Benoni type positions where white has a lot of space, according to the engine, black is much worse uh, in most variations. Uh, and of course, I looked at this too, uh, so I was prepared for this. But I was kind of hoping to play the position with g4 because I wanted to put pressure on my opponent and, and get an attacking position. So, okay, here I have to play knight g2. Uh, this was taken, there are no other moves, I'm threatening to win a pawn. So knight takes, bishop takes, uh, knight e7, all very standard, black is trying to play for f5. And I have to break the center on the other side of the board. So again, the same idea, c5 and cd6. I played c5, my opponent castled, takes, takes, and queen d2. Uh, the idea behind queen d2 is not to play bishop h6, it's uh, to be able to castle queenside as quickly as possible. Okay, f5, the only move possible. f3, I have to save my bishop. And here my opponent played f4, which is a mistake, but it's a thematic mistake. It's really hard to suggest other options. Maybe it's better to keep the tension. Maybe go bishop d7 and, and try to develop play rook c8. So bishop d7 castles, rook c8, 
king b1 maybe a6 preparing b5 but he played f4 and I played bishop f2 and in this position he played another very thematic move which I thought was the best move uh, I was unfamiliar with this position uh, I knew the ideas but I didn't know the exact position it wasn't in my preparation anymore uh, he played g5 which seems very reasonable to me the engine says it's a mistake and I'm going to show you why he should have played something like bishop f6 uh, and the setup he should go for is strange bishop f6 and h5 now that seems very weakening to me and if I can open up the position with g3 or h3 g4 that seems reasonable in the game he played g5 and I reacted poorly so I wanted to prevent g4 but there is no reason to prevent g4 it's, I shouldn't be preventing g4 because the pawn is hanging I ended up playing h3 which I still have an advantage but but it's not as, as big so firstly I can ignore g5 the idea behind g5 is my opponent wants to go knight g6 and later on knight h4 to put pressure on the g2 pawn uh, so I can ignore it I can just castle and if knight g6 I can go king b1 if g4 then simply knight b5 and the idea behind knight b5 isn't to jump into c7 it's to reroute the knight to c4 and to use the b6 square so probably b5 has to play, be played now but if b5 is played then my knight is rerouting via c2 and b4 into c6 so this if if a5 is forced to prevent knight b4 then i can just win a pawn it's an open b file but still a pawn is a pawn and if and if a5 isn't played then then a knight on c6 will be a menace so i could have just ignored g5 but a much better move and the reason why g5 is a big advantage to white it's plus two and a half according to the engine which is really hard to to understand when you're playing this position is is h4 and of course if if hg4 then i can just play bishop takes uh, uh if sorry gh4 then bishop takes h4 uh, and after castle's queen side i should be much better with two open files if uh, somehow i lose the g pawn and if i don't lose the g pawn then i have a target on h7 and of course after h4 if if g4 then i can just safely win a pawn uh, i mean and i have a passed pawn on the king side and my pawns are moving forward and i can easily blockade with bishop f3 if ever needed but i don't have to because f3 is never never an option because i have two defenders so yeah on g5 h4 would have been according to the engine a winning position from a human perspective very hard to play for black but i played h3 knight g6 castle queen side uh, a6 a6 is a blunder uh, it makes a ton of sense to go for b5 but this at this point when I've already castled and the bishop is still on c8 it's a blunder because I can play knight a4 during the game I was actually considering knight a4 and that's the worst part usually I'm not upset if I completely miss an idea but if I see the idea and don't assess it correctly, then I, I hate that. I ended up playing king b1, which isn't bad. White is still better, but knight a4 is plus 3 according to the engine, which isn't important. More important, the, the position is extremely hard, if not impossible, to play for black. So my threat is knight b6. If I play knight b6 with the pawn still on b7, then it's easy to see that the queen side is blocked. Black has no attack my knight is defended and i can push my pawn to a5 a4 a5 and play king b1 rook c rook c1 rook c2 rook h c1 and just infiltrate on c7 it's really not easy to challenge the c7 square black would have to move the bishop twice move the queen away in the meantime i can do stuff so uh, black would have to go b5 here and now i grab the bishop pair i go knight b6 rook b8 knight c8 rook c8 check king b1 and if something like knight h4 putting pressure on uh, on g2 i can actually just ignore that i'm not saying i would have seen this but i would have definitely tried to go for something like this so let's say rook c1 if knight takes g2 then, then rook c6 
and you cannot take because I get the d5 square for the queen. I have a protected uh, pawn by the queen on c6 and I have a bishop supporting the advance. This pawn, of course, is completely irrelevant. In fact, when I play rook g1 and the knight goes back to h4, the g5 pawn is hanging in many positions. But even if they don't play uh, knight h4, <clears throat> if my opponent tries something like rook f7, then rook c1, rook c7, simply exchanging everything off gives me an advantage because as soon as the major pieces are traded off, I have a better endgame. I can defend my g2 pawn with bishop f1 and most importantly I have a4 breaking up the pawns and basically winning the pawns if the major pieces are off the board. Not to mention that this maneuver is pretty hard to stop when if the major pieces are off the board the d6 pawn is hanging or the bishop is tied down to the defense. Unfortunately after a6 I completely misassessed knight a4 and decided to go for king b1 instead. I think knight a4 was my opportunity to win the game. My opponent now went b5, of course, preventing knight a4, rook c1, bishop d7 finally developing. And here I, I played a bad move. I played bishop d3. Bishop d3, uh, if you'd like me to explain it, is about defending the g2 pawn with my queen. After I play rook d1, I wanted to get in rook d1 and on knight h4 I wanted to be able to play bishop g1. And I also wanted to see what he is going to do. Uh, of course bishop d3 gives away my advantage, the game is now equal. Uh, instead of bishop d3 I should have simply gone a3, uh, preventing any further advances. And if for example knight h4 I can just defend, if queen a5 I can go queen d3. And my idea is to eventually either take the knight and double my rooks uh, or reroute my knight into c6. If I can get my knight into c6, I should be better. But as I said, I played bishop d3. Queen a5 played, rook h to d1, going, on with, going along with my plan uh, on, on knight h4, I, gonna go, I wanna go bishop g1. Rook fc8. And here I decided to trade pieces because I thought the weakness on d6 would give me an advantage in the endgame. So knight e2, rook c1 I have to take with the knight, or with the king, but taking with the knight makes more sense. Queen d2, rook d2, my opponent played bishop f6, I played rook c2, he played bishop d8. And at this point I understood that I have nothing because the bishop is rerouting uh, to a good square. My opponent is controlling both c7 and c8. I cannot use the c6 square, at least not easily. I would have to do something like bishop e2, knight d3, knight b4, knight c6. And if I ever play bishop e2, he can just go a5. So in this position, I played b4, offered the draw, and my opponent accepted. Uh, it, it's dead even, and it's easy to see why. My opponent can never play a5 because I can simply take and round up the b-pawn. Uh, my opponent can never challenge the c-file nor can I infiltrate the c-file. My opponent can never take the g2-pawn because it's defended. And my only plan, my only active plan is knight b3 a5. And I'm not sure I want to do that. Even though I weaken uh, the d6-pawn and get the c7 square, let, let's say just for the sake of argument that black did nothing for two moves. This position I was trying to assess, this was the only reason for me to play on. If I can get my rook into c7, then that compensates for the doubled pawns. Also, I have the b6 square for the bishop. Unfortunately, as soon as I do this, my opponent goes rook c8. And once bishop c8 is played, my opponent is in time to defend the pawn if I try to do this and this, then my opponent defends and I have no way to break through. I have a4, but the a6 pawn is defended. And once the knight goes back, what do I do? I really didn't know how to continue here. The knight has c5, I will have to give up my bishop, but I don't want to because that gives my opponent a passed pawn on c5, a protected passed pawn once c4 is played. 
So I ended up playing b4 and, and offering a draw uh, because this active plan doesn't work and I don't see any other plan. I basically don't want to give up the c5 square. So we agreed to a draw and I was upset because I I felt that I was better throughout the game and, and I was at some point I had a winning advantage. Unfortunately, I didn't play knight a4 at an opportune moment, nor did I play h4 to punish g5. So when you're playing strong players, you get a one chance or a couple of chances, minor chances to go for an advantage, or in this case, I had two big chances. And if you miss them, that's it, you're, you're, you're not going to win. So the game was a draw. Anyway, I hope it was interesting. I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye.